Hey guys, it is the end of July. 2018, and that means that it's time for this month's QA for Guns and Tactics. And as you can see behind me, we are at TriggerCon. We've kind of last day of the show, we've kind of taken over the stage, and we are going to do the QA. We got a few questions from our awesome viewers. So before we get rocking and rolling, of course, I have to give a shout out to Rainier Arms and TriggerCon for all of the sponsorship that they do to the episode. They make the QA a possibility, and they, of course, give out prizes uh, to all of our viewers that ask a qu question to get the lucky question drawn for their winner. So we're super thankful for them and thankful for all they've done for the show. Now, if you want to see your question appear on the show, make sure you send us an email to theqa at gunsandtactics.com. We'll put an address right there at the bottom of your screen. Please send us your question or you can leave a comment on this video or any one of our social media feeds. Use that hashtag theqa so we can answer your questions. So let's get right to it. Dave, I've been thinking about getting a semi-auto 22 pistol. What would your recommendation be? Would like it to be suppressor ready and also easy to uh, train my kids with. This is from Martin via email. Uh, I'm partial to the Ruger series of 22 semi-autos. You can get them now from the factory with a threaded barrel. There's a ton of accessories. The Mark IV line uh, is easier to take down than the previous generation. So if I was picking a semi-auto 22 pistol right now, it would be a Mark IV Ruger 2245. It has a grip angle that's similar to a 1911. It's reliable, they run, there's tons of accessories. If you ever wanted to shoot a bullseye match with it, you can get a nicer trigger. They're accurate, they're again, reliable, suppressor ready. That's what I would get and they're reasonably priced. So no, no issues with that. All right, this one is from Dustin via email. What are your thoughts on a 16 inch AR barrel versus a 14 and a half inch? I would rather have a 14 and a half inch from BCM, but I'm also in the market for a suppressor and I'm eyeing the Griffin Armament M4 SD2. What are your thoughts? So with a 16 inch barrel, you have the option to take that muzzle device on and off. No problem, you can you know, get a suppressor, you can do whatever. If you get a 14 and a half inch barrel, and unless you register that rifle as a short barrel rifle, you have to have the muzzle device pinned and welded to the barrel. Now that's no problem if you are for sure going to keep that muzzle device forever. However, the other catch is not only do you have to keep that muzzle device, but because that muzzle device is pinned and welded, you're generally stuck with that gas block and you're stuck with that rail because that barrel nut is also stuck to that system. So if you know for sure that I love my handguard, I love my gas block, I love my muzzle device, yes, you can pin and weld and you can get an overall shorter length. However, you're generally only saving about an inch, inch and a half, depending on the muzzle device and everything else, so sometimes it might not be worth it. Now, Griffin, they make some awesome suppressors. My favorite right now is Dead Air, um, but Griffin makes some really nice suppressors too, as does Surefire, as does Gemtech. I mean, there's a ton of good suppressor companies out there. The key is, is that once you pick your suppressor, you generally stick to it because you have that one suppressor and then you get different muzzle devices. Uh, overall, I would say 14 and a half inch versus 16, it's really not worth it to go with a 14 and a half inch pinned and welded just because you're kind of stuck with it, like I said earlier. So overall, I recommend 16. But if you know you're dedicating a 16 inch, uh, you know, overall gun that's gonna be dedicated, suppressed, you have it set up the way you want, you can certainly do that. So in fact, I'm gonna have a video coming up where I talk about a gun that I built. I call it the Sweet 16, and it is basically a pinned and welded gun. It's a 13.7 inch barrel with a pinned and welded dead air device that brings it right to 16.1 inches. And I'm committed to that setup, but I like that setup. So great question, Dustin. All right, this one is from Tripper, Triple uh, Helix from a YouTube comment. How do you ensure that you're mounting the optic as straight as possible when there aren't any flat surfaces to use or a bubble level kit? So it kind of depends on the scope, but most scopes on the market at the six o'clock position of the scope, they have a flat surface. And then I use the Arasaka leveling uh, tool, which is basically a machinist's leveling wedge. And that levels off of the scope base or receiver and then that wedge keeps a perpendicular surface and you can align the scope with that. So that is one option. The other option is you can use a level on the actual receiver of the gun or the rails. Make sure that's level completely and then use one of the scope uh, elevation or windage, or excuse me, elevation knob and make sure that is then level. The other option is you can actually use a flashlight through the scope that will project the reticle. And again, making sure that your rifle is completely level verified in a vise that you can then use a plumb bob to line that up with the reticle. And it is critical that you make sure that reticle is level. A canted reticle can send your rounds 
different places when you're shooting. Additionally, if you have a canted reticle, and even if you're just shooting perfectly straight, when you make up down adjustments, you're actually then gonna be making left right adjustments because that reticle could be canted. So if you go up, you actually go over, that kind of thing. So make sure that your level reticle is level for best setup. So that is our third question. We have a few more to go, but before we do that, we gotta give a shout out to Rainier Arms. If you guys like buying all the coolest, newest gear, make sure you check out the Apex Club from Rainier Arms. For a low price of just under a hundred bucks, you get free ground tripping on all of your orders, exclusive access to all the cool new stuff, plus you get a discount. So that hundred dollar fee can easily pay for itself within your first couple of orders if you order all the cool stuff. And Rainier Arms carries all the cool stuff for your AR, your Glock, precision rifle, and all sorts of accessories. So. They are one of my favorite people to buy from just because they have a lot of cool stuff and the Apex Club makes it even better. Discount, free ground shipping, exclusive availability. Check out the Rainier Arms Apex Club, 99 bucks. This next question is from Kevin via a YouTube comment. Would you recommend cantilever quick detach mount like LaRue or American, I'm assuming American Defense is what you mean, for AR optic mounts? Well, absolutely. And some of the ones that I use a lot of, uh, I have used LaRue, I have used American Defense. Bobo makes some seriously awesome mounts, as does Midwest Industries. Uh, they, they're just awesome mounts. And what's nice is that if you did need to take that off for whatever reason, it can go back on. But here's the thing, with most optic mounts, low power variable optics, whatever it might be, I don't personally find a big need to take that on and off. And technically, anytime you take an optic on or off, you should verify zero. A lot of them out there are returned to zero or pretty darn close to return to zero. I've tested several of them, and it, again, they, they come right back on as long as you're putting in the same spot, locking them down. But yeah, they work great. Uh, red dots, things like that. In case something were to happen, that optic were to break or whatever, it's just toolless removal. So it's certainly an option. But yeah, there's tons of good brand names out there. So yes, I, I recommend them. I use them a lot. No issues whatsoever. However, if this is a duty use or a patrol rifle or a home defense serious use gun or whatever, also consider adding additional backup sights or a backup sighting system depending on your needs. That could be an issue. All right, this one is from JW112965, the QA. I'm assuming that's me. What is your favorite AK front sight? Black, blade, white, stripe, bead, etc. question mark. Uh, honestly, for AK, when I'm shooting iron sights, I just like a standard iron sight, but then I will put a little bit of high-vis or fluorescent paint on that front, just the actual front sight itself. You can use uh, fishing lure paint. That stuff's pretty durable. It holds up. It comes in fluorescent colors. You can even use neon or fluorescent nail polish or a paint marker. But I generally find that I just like a front sight that I can pick up quick, similar to some of the high-vis handgun sights on the market, and that's what I roll with. Uh, you know, so they work just fine. Although my favorite sight on the AK is actually an Aimpoint Micro. Like, that's just awesome. I have a, a handguard system that takes the Aimpoint Micro. It just works really, really awesome. It makes shooting that gun a lot of fun. So great question. All right, this one is from Toshio Lewis, or Toshio, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, I apologize. Hi, Tim. Actually, Tim is my last name, so yeah, I think you meant hi, Dave, but that's okay. I'm a regular guy who carries a concealed handgun, flashlight, and medical every day, but want to learn more about OC spray as a less lethal option. You mentioned in your video Freeze Plus B, and I've heard other folks, uh, LE folks, mention Sabre. Could you please shed some light on this topic in a future episode? Um, you know, I think that would actually be a great future episode, but to answer your question sooner than later, uh, Freeze Plus P and Sabre are both very well regarded law enforcement brands of chemical agent. I prefer Freeze Plus P uh, because back when we were doing some testing, I can't remember if it was Sabre or another brand, but we found that that other brand was actually flammable. And you might not think, well, that's no big deal. However, in my line of work, if we were to spray somebody with that chemical agent and then use a taser, which is basically a spark, um, basically we sprayed a t-shirt with this other brand and then we tased it and it lit on fire. So Freeze Plus P has a specific formula that is not you know, flammable, so that's what we use. So that's what I have the most experience with. I've been sprayed with it several times and it's not comfortable at all, it sucks, uh, because it has a mix of CS, OC, so it's not only an irritant, but it also is just a pain agent. I mean, it, it sucks. So I like Freeze Plus P, it works well for me. I've used it in the field many a times. Um, I get sprayed with it for training, things like that, or when we have it, exposures, but uh, that's what I prefer. But Sabre is another good brand too. However, keep in mind that you, you don't maybe not need the flammable portion because you're not carrying a taser, so that might not be important. 
So that is our six questions for this month's QA. Uh, we have Eric backstage. He's going to generate a random number between one and three here in just a second. And we're going to give away a prize from Rainier Arms Apex Club. Five is the random number. So that would be JW112965. We have a prize coming from Rainier Arms for you. And I, I apologize, it is TriggerCon. Everybody is super swamped. I don't have the prize in hand. But uh, JW112965, send us a message at the email address shown below the QA at gunsandtactics.com. I'm going to get in touch with you. We'll get you a prize pack out for this month's QA winner. So again, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and our QA series and our other videos. And of course, make sure you check out our TriggerCon coverage. We've checked out a lot of really, really cool products and met with a lot of really cool people. I think we did like right around 30 plus videos from TriggerCon. It was a packed two days. Plus we have the Golden Trigger coverage coming up too. So a lot of cool stuff coming out on the channel. But again, if you want to see your question on the show so you can be a winner, and have your question answered, make sure you submit us an email at the QA at gunsandtactics.com. The address will be on the screen below, or you can send us a message through social media or leave a comment. But again, email is best. That way we get it right to the inbox. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day.